All right, I wanted to shoot a small little video here on uh, a couple a couple items. Uh, this is the uh, little um, board that I like to use to generate signals. It, it goes from 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz, and I use it all the time, and it's it's very nice. There's been some confusion about whether these two ports, why it has two ports on the output and what those two ports do. Uh, so I have it programmed for 100 megahertz, and let's take a look at that on the uh, on the oscilloscope. And we see we have uh, have a square wave coming out at 100 megahertz. Now uh, let me turn on the other channel, which is the other A port, and you can see that it has two signals, and they are 180 degrees out of phase. So if you were ever wondering, uh, you get. Uh, uh, two of the same signal, but they are 180 degrees out of phase. So that's what these two connectors are. All right. So uh, the next thing I wanted to point out is that it's a square wave, okay? And uh, which means it has harmonics. Now we can see those in a spectrum analyzer, and I'll show that later. But um, yeah, it will have it will have harmonics. So um, you may get tricked into looking at this thing though, this is a fairly fast oscilloscope. This oscilloscope is 350 megahertz, but you may have a 100 megahertz oscilloscope and it may be a bit uh, a bit slower than this one. And uh, we can do that. We can say, let's see here, uh, limit bandwidth. I can limit the bandwidth to 100 megahertz. Okay, so your, your oscilloscope may look like this, all right? or your oscilloscope may be a 20 megahertz oscilloscope, and then it will look like that, all right, or something. Um, so let's uh, go back off again. There's 350 megahertz. And let me increase the speed of the signal. So here's a 200 megahertz signal. You can see it's still square wave, and there's a 300 megahertz signal. You go, oh, 300 megahertz. Oh, it's turned into a nice sine wave now, right? And well, no, it's not. You're, you're, you're reaching the the bandwidth limit of the oscilloscope. So you might get tricked into thinking that a particular signal is uh, a sine wave instead of it's actually a square wave. And the only really way to tell for sure is to use a spectrum analyzer to do that, uh, to do that analysis. Uh, it's sometimes very, very hard with, uh, with an oscilloscope to see that. So let's move over to the, uh, let's move over to the um, spectrum analyzer. All right, so I'm gonna hook up the uh, signal here and uh, we have it set back to 100 megahertz and we see one big peak here at uh, we'll do a preset here okay so we have um, a peak here at 100 megahertz uh, 300 600 and blah, blah 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 and we can do a peak search on those uh, next peak right and this one's at 300 and the little even ones are down below Next peak right, uh, that one's at 800, 900, or I'm sorry, 900. Uh, anyway, you get it. it it's, it's, it's all the odd, odd harmonics. And so you can see it's a square wave. So let's increase it to 200 megahertz, 300 megahertz. This is probably a little bit easier to see. Uh, we're here at 300 megahertz uh, for that peak and 900 megahertz for that peak. So it's the odd harmonics and stuff, right? So that's, this, this is the best way to tell whether you have a square wave or not. So remember at 300 megahertz, all we saw was a roundy thing on the uh, Rigel that looked like a sine wave. And obviously it's not a sine wave. It has, uh, it has all of the even harmonics and odd harmonics and we can see that it's a square wave. All right. So anyway, that's, that's one quick lesson. Um, let's take a look at another instrument. All right, before we go there, this is the chip that's being used on uh, on this little board here. It's an ADF 4351, 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. It's an N synthesizer, an integer N synthesizer, fractional N and integer N. Uh, has a VCO, has lots of programmable stuff. Anyway, it's a very it's a very interesting chip. It's very very uh, flexible in what it can output. So it's a nice chip. There are other chips that you might see in other instruments, uh, a bunch by Silicon Labs. You'll see the Silicon Lab chips in the Tiny SA and the Tiny and the Nano VNA, uh, the uh, 4432 and the uh, 5351. 
um, and variations of those. All right. So I think uh, I think this one was originally used in the uh, first nano VNA, and I think this one's used in the in the uh, tiny SA. So let's take a look at one of those chips. Um, all right, let's turn on the uh, tiny SA here. All right, and I am going to go to the menu mode, menu mode. I'm going to do low out, and I'm going to set it to 100 megahertz. And I'm going to turn on. So now we have 100 megahertz coming out of the uh, low connection here. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and hook it up here. And uh, you can see that we have uh, peak search. We have something happening at 100, but we have a bunch of other things happening as well. And so let's uh, kind of zoom into there. Let's do a marker. What's over here? This is around 400. So we can do a frequency stop of 400 megahertz and span that out. There we go. So here's our 100 megahertz uh, uh, marker. And we have some other harmonics. And we have some very, very strange values because it's an N fractional chip. And you're going to get a bunch of subharmonics as well as it's synthesizing that, uh, synthesizing that thing. So it's not a clean sine wave, it's got some other weird things. Let's go ahead and change this to uh, 200 megahertz. 200 megahertz. And uh, let's zoom out all the way again. And let's go to 300, then we'll zoom into it. Uh, 300 megahertz. Okay, 300 megahertz. So 300 megahertz, we do the peak search. You say, oh, hey, look, this is looking, this is looking really, really good. We don't have any harmonics to the right, but we do have harmonics to the left. So let's once again do a frequency stop of 400. And here's our, um, here's our carrier, but we have these, these other things down here but they're lower in frequency, but we still have harmonics. And so what does that mean? And what would that look like on the oscilloscope? Well, let's do that. Let's, let's go back over to the oscilloscope. So here we are in the oscilloscope and you say, oh, well, the things look just great. Um, but they actually don't look so great if you zoom in. There's actually some jitter on the edges. Okay, they have kind of thin here and thick here, and we're thick up here. And so we have some subharmonics that's happening. If we do single shots, we can kind of see it. If I zoom out a bit and I do some single shots, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see uh, some of these kind of moving up and down. So it's, it's, there's a slow uh, modulation or, uh, yeah, a modulation of the signal uh, that, uh, that gets added in. And those are the frequencies that are lower than the carrier. And so uh, you need to be aware of that also. All right, there we go. Just a quick little look at uh, a couple synthesizers that you may use for your testing and stuff. And just be aware of the, uh, the square waves, be aware of the uh, subharmonics and stuff that may add in stuff. And uh, uh, everything's not as clean as you might think.